Good morning, and welcome to Stewardship Sunday. We are Tootie Kuhn. And Mike Lehman. And we're co-chairing the campaign this year. <coughs> Today is the official start of our campaign, and it will run through October 29th. We decided to make this announcement before the service to emphasize our belief that stewardship is inherently a part of worship. We want to acknowledge a few people who are joining us throughout the campaign to answer any questions you might have. Our stewardship ambassadors, Jane Crane, Ann New, and John Shea, and our wardens, Heather Parr and Tom Ringo, and our vestry members, Greg Abel, Bridget Berry, Mary Ellen De La Pena, Terry Jones, Dan Rohan, and Krista Webb. They all will be wearing stewardship buttons just like Al. The theme for this year is Letting Our Light Shine from Matthew 5, 15 to 16. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify <coughs> your Father in heaven. The stewardship packets are in the mail and they should reach you in the coming days. Extra copies are also available in the Narthex, and they're also available on the GRACE website. As you read through these materials, we hope you will better appreciate the significant challenge we have for 2024. Our projected expenses are $763,000, which is a modest increase over the current year when we raised pledges of $574,000 and received a very generous one-time gift, a challenge grant of $100,000. Our 2024 goal of $740,000 reflects a 28% increase over 2023 because we do not anticipate receiving an additional $100,000 one-time gift, and we hope not to have to dip deeply into our financial reserves. Every pledge is a personal decision and we ask that you make the decision faithfully and prayerfully. The pledge card includes two models to aid you in making your decision. The first is proportional giving, or making a gift as a percentage of your income. And the second is to increase your 2023 pledge by 28% to make up our shortfall for 2024. Today, we are both submitting our pledge cards and we have each embraced one of these models. We are in, truly hope you'll join us in making a generous pledge of support so that we can assure that our light will shine brightly in the coming year. Thank you for your faithfulness, and God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. Please stand. When we enter this place, we do so through fire and water. Through the waters of baptism, we move. And whether we walk sideways, far from the straight path, or take the straight path into the center, we are grateful for the many gifts God has given us. We place our gifts in the center of this holy space in gratitude for what has come before and for the future that lies on the other side. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first song is going to be new, but it ties in to the sermon. So we'll sing the first verse twice, and then we'll pick it up and sing the rest of the song. Let it shine on me, let it shine. Shine. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of debts forgiven, you call to account our hunger for power. You disturb hierarchies which crush the weak, break the vicious cycles of revenge and domination, that we might look to him whose mercy never ends, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israels went in, Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went, went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We're going to read the psalm responsibly. I'm going to start, and if you could respond in the bold, that'd be fabulous. Alleluia, when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel God's dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains get like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of God, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water, and Flintstone into a flowing spring.
a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one of them owed him 10,000 talents, was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you 
all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart always be acceptable to you, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this is kickoff Sunday for our annual stewardship campaign. For me, it's an exciting time. Lent and Advent are seasons for internal reflection and preparation. The stewardship campaign is an opportunity for our community to do the same. We are invited to take the time to reflect on our life in this beloved community and Grace's role in the larger community. Let us acknowledge with gratitude our joys, hopes, and aspirations as we channel our Creator's love. The slogan for this campaign is Letting Our Light Shine, Matthew 5, 6, 15 and 16. It's the check text chosen as the frame. This is the text that I will be considering with you this morning. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. <clears throat> These two verses follow the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus lists who are blessed in the eyes of God, the poor, the mourners, the meek, those who hunger, thirst, and are persecuted for righteousness, the merciful, the pure of heart, and the peacemakers. He reminds his listeners that they, we, are the salt of the earth, and the light of the world. Such a familiar passage, perhaps too familiar. Let's examine it through the voice of another, one of the blessed Jesus identified in the Beatitudes. When I first heard our theme, Letting Our Light Shine, I recall a song by that name. After a little research, I found the song. I was a little off with the name, the correct title is Let Your Light Shine On Me. <clears throat> it was written in the 1920s by a gospel blues singer, guitarist, and evangelist named Blind Willie Johnson. The lyrics were based on today's gospel reading, Matthew 5:16. It is, in fact, the song we sang at the beginning of the service, our opening song. Blind Willie Johnson was born in 1897 in a very small town south of Waco, Texas. His parents were sharecroppers. At age five, he started playing a cigar, cigar box guitar, a gift from his father. Although he had poor eyesight from birth, his biographies, biographers believe he was blinded at age seven by his stepmother. She threw lye water in his face during a family argument concerning her infidelity. He died in Beaumont, Texas in 1945 of malaria. He had suffered the repeated bouts of the disease for a year. No hospital would care for him because he was black. His last months were spent living alone in the ruins of his burnt out home. Blind Willie aspired to be a Baptist preacher from a young age and became well, a well-known itinerant evangelist in Texas. His gift was his music, his passion, evangelism, sharing the good news. 
He shared his gift with all who would listen. He knew the Lord. The lyrics of his music were inspired from the Bible as reflected by the Spirit. He recorded 30 songs in the 1920s for a Columbia race record label. One year his records outsold those of Bessie Smith. He sang in a harsh, gravelly bass voice intended to be heard by those passing outside the church. His natural range was a tenor. His music has been characterized as fierce and not unlike the hell and damnation style of a Baptist preacher. He was powerful in effect and spoke directly to those listening. Actually, he was arrested in New Orleans for attempting to incite a riot, for singing the song, If I Had My Way, I'd Tear This Building Down, in front of the Custom House on Canal Street. You may recognize this song, if you're of a certain age, as Peter, Paul, and Mary performed a very popular version of it in the 1960s. Let Your Light Shine On Me is Blind Willie's straightforward plea to the Creator for her presence and support. The song is the anthem to frame a ministry, a ministry inspired by these two verses in Matthew. The first verse of the song is, Let your light shine on me, let your light shine on me. Oh, let your light from the lighthouse shine on. Let your light shine on me, let your light shine on me. Oh, let your light from the lighthouse shine on. This prayer, simple and profound, and for me both inspirational and aspirational. The first phrase is a request for our Creator's presence. Let it shine on me. The second, let your light from the lighthouse shine on, a plea that the light be shared in the world. Let your, our Creator's light shine on, letting our Creator's light shine through us. Within the body of the song is a simple confession of faith. My Lord, he's done just what he said. Heal the sick and raise the dead. Here, Blind Willie, the evangelist, is testifying to God's light for our world. We know God by his actions. God is steadfast. I know I've got religion and I ain't ashamed. Angels in heaven done wrote my name. Blind Willie throughout it all knows that he is God's beloved. Even though he was blind, Johnson saw God's light. Even though he was poor and illiterate, he knew Jesus. We are the light of the world, the light gifted to us from our Creator. It is our light at grace, the light of love and community. We are privileged to channel God's love. Brian McLaren is a public theologian and prolific author. His most recent book is entitled, Do I Stay Christian? A Guide for Doubters, the Disappointed, and the Disillusioned. I commend this book as a thoughtful, honest assessment of the state of Christianity today. Spoiler alert, he concludes after acknowledging all the horrible things done in the past and continuing, and continuing today in the name of Christianity? That the answer is yes. In answering the question how to stay Christian, he quotes the theologian Catherine, Catherine Keller, who said, it is not what we say about God, but how we do God. It is not what we say about God, but how we do God. An off-quoted observation from James Baldwin is, I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. Dean Kelly Brown Douglas and others in the Episcopal Church call us to be church. Be church. As we sit this morning in this beautiful building, 
in an amazing pocket of creation. It is clear that being church involves maintenance, staff, heat, and all the necessities of maintaining a home. This building is a sanctuary, a place of safety. It is where we come in person, or for some virtually, for support, community, enrichment, and nurture. This is, as the Celts say, a thin place, an area of energy where the veil between this world and the eternal is thin. I, for one, am grateful for both its presence and the call to support it. Be Church. We at Grace have defined our community by four declarative words. Inclusion, service, discovery, gratitude. This is the frame of how we do God. This is the frame of our response to the challenge of James Baldwin. What we say can be believed because of what we do. They are the colors of light we hold true. These are the colors in which the world sees us. Tiddy and Mike have taken on the role of leading us in discernment. This is a time to reflect on what grace, our grace community means to us individually, to our families, and to the community at large. This is a time to prayerfully consider our role and our response. Our church building was built to let the light in. Those of us who sit on the Walker Hall side of the sanctuary experience this in abundance in spring and summer. In addition to having masks available as we enter, I wonder at times about also having sunglasses. A few weeks ago, Eric announced that he had just had the windows cleaned, so now the light can more abundantly shine in on us. Our response to this stewardship appeal will let our light shine in each other's lives and into the world. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in God above us. Make and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humanity. We believe in God beside us. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor. He was tortured and nailed to a tree. Knowing full passion and deep sorrow, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will one day be known. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, the giving breath of the church, she is the spirit of healing and forgiveness, the source of the resurrection, and the life everlasting. Amen.
came and said to Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus replied, you forgive not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. God drove the sea back from a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. God, help us to hold your earth and its creatures sacred by improving the purity of our water and air. God, hear our prayer. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. God, be with all children, families, and those who live alone. As school begins again, help all learners to find your truth and act with compassion. God, hear our prayer. For your love's sake. It is before their own God that they stand or fall. They will be upheld, for God is able to make them stand. God, move us to support those people throughout the world who are in danger, especially women who are deprived of their human rights. God, hear our prayer. For your love's sake. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Give us grace to welcome our new rector, Eric. Remind and support us all as we minister to one another during this time of transition. God, hear our prayer. For your love's sake. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Gracious and loving God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance. God, hear our prayer. For your love's sake. Whether we live or whether we die, we are God's. We offer prayers for those on our prayer list and all others who are suffering or have died. We pray for healing for Kathy, Terry, Marissa, Lauren, Julian, Scott, Janice, Ann C., Aunt Linda. We pray for support for Mariah's parents, Andy and Guy. Ted and Judy, Andrea, Jen, Aaron, Anthony, Aunt Linda's family. We give thanks for the lives of Patrick, Mariah, and Thumper. God, hear our prayer. The mountains skip like rams, and little and the little hills young sheep. We thank you for your gift of being alive in this season. God, hear our prayer. For your love's sake. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Familiar. I 
No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works, the works of your hands, and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time, Gather us with all your people into the joy of our true, eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the people of God, holy food for holy people. Thank you. 
Rise. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Spirit of life, we thank you for disordering our boundaries in this feast of delight. Draw us out of hidden places and centers of conformity to feel your laughter and live in your pleasure. Amen. You may be seated unless you have a birthday, anniversary, or other celebration to share with the community. And then you better get up here. All right. Well, why don't we start with... Oh, we'll start. Oh, it's okay. Here. I'll start with Anna and we'll pass the mic. What are, what are we celebrating?
Let us celebrate. Holy One, we give you thanks for filling us with your life-giving spirit and for teaching us to number our days. We give thanks for the relationships you set us in, uh, the birthdays and anniversaries and celebrations of those we love and of our life in you and in community. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessings on these, your servants. Fill them with your strength, wisdom, and courage this day and all the days of their life. In the name of your well-beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. foundations, the leap of new fire, which turns oppression to ashes. May her wildness seduce us with holy desire and the blessing of the one holy and undivided trinity be with you and remain with you always. something huh wow well i want to get the people who live near grace maybe have seen in the e-news uh, i'm searching for night owls for grace if you live within 10 5 to 10 minute drive even 15 minute drive from grace um, i want to invite you to join the team of folks who come to check grace each evening to make sure it's locked up and we close the gate we don't lock the gate anymore but we close it and, I'd, and if you're comfortable in your skin at night in a, in a building that makes noises, um, it, does, it does talk, the building does talk. Please come and see me. I'd love to have you on the team. We're trying to build it out so we each can take one week during the month. And, and if we have more than that, then that would be even better. So please come see me after the service is over. Thank you. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 